In this lesson we'll learn more about arrays in Java. Here is our agenda for today. We'll discuss everything about arrays today, including what runtime errors might happen during interaction with them. Also we'll talk about multidimensional arrays. And I will show you how you can use arrays class to perform standard manipulations with arrays. Before we give definition to arrays, let's try to understand what do we need arrays for. Pretend you are implementing software for a travel agency. And you want to allow administrator to see list of people who bought trip to Spain for specific date. You need to get this information from database and group all users in one place in your program to show them to your administrator. For such purposes you can group all users in an array. So what is array? Array is an object which contains elements of similar data types and support access to them by index. Accessing each of the element in the array by its index for the constant amount of time, that's what we love arrays for. Just remember that indices in array start from zero. That means if array size is 9, the last index in this array is 8. If you want to compare arrays in Java and in other languages, be aware that there are some differences. For example, the important one is that in Java array size is fixed. Once array is created, you can't change size of an array. Now let's take a look how to work with arrays in Java source code. I prepared for this lesson before video recording, so we don't spend time during the lesson on typing code. I created this class beforehand and you can focus directly on the examples. You can declare array variable like this. Type of elements in your array, square brackets and variable name. There is also another way to declare array variable. Type of elements in your array, variable name and square brackets. You can use the one you would like the most, but I would recommend you to use the first declaration. In my humble opinion it is more readable, because you instantly see that this variable is array of ints, but not like you are noticing that this variable is int and after that you realized that this is array of ints. Now let's initialize this variable. This variable equals new type of the elements in array square brackets and 10 inside the square brackets. New keyword tells GVM to allocate memory for the new object and return reference to this object. And in square brackets I indicate size of my array. This array has size 10. You can check array size with length property of the array. Like this. And let's run this program. The length property of the array will tell us the size of the specific array. To get access to the element in the array you can use its index. Let's print to console the first element of this array. Let me comment this line first and uncomment this line. You know this comment. And here we are retrieving the first element of the array by its index. You remember that index of first element in array is 0. Let's run our program. You see that the first element is 0. Why it is 0 if I didn't put 0 in this array? That is because each data type in Java has its own default value. For integers it's 0. Let's take a look at default double value. I created array of doubles here. Let me uncomment this line and run the program. For double default value is 0, 0.0. What about booleans? Here is similar example with booleans. And run the program. For booleans the default value is false. Since primitives are not actually objects on their face in Java, then they must be initialized by default. Because semantically they can never be empty. Primitive variables are not the references to objects. Each primitive variable stores a value in itself. Now let's take a look what will happen if I would use index which doesn't exist in array. You saw that this array has size 10. Then the last index in this array is 9. I will try to print to console element with index 10 in this array. What will happen? Runtime exception called array index out of bounds exception. I tried to get element from array with non-existing index. Always remember that the last index of the array is array size subtract 1. 
because indices are started from zero. Now I want to show you array literals. If you already know size of an array and variables, you can use array literals like this. Declare array variable first, and then use braces to list all elements of an array. Now let's talk about multidimensional arrays. Essentially there is no such construction as multidimensional array. Technically, it's properly to say that you can create array of arrays. Thus, implement matrix in your program. For example, let's create array, which will contain int arrays. You declare a variable first. This is int array type. And this is array. So you have array of int arrays. Here we have variable name. And this is array literal. So you use braces to declare your array. And inside this array you use array literals to instantiate other arrays. In multidimensional arrays you can get access to specific element by index of the array, that will be index of the row, and index of the element in that array, that will be column index. Just like this. Here is variable of our multidimensional array. This zero refers to index of the array. This is our first array. And this number refers to the element in this array. So basically the first number indicates row, and the second number indicates column. Let's run this program. Here it is. You can instantiate multidimensional array specifying just its size, without array literals. In this case I specify just array size. Let me print to console the first element of this array. It is null. Why? Because arrays are reference types and not primitives. If you have array of arrays, the default value of each array variable will be null. Because all arrays are not instantiated yet, and there is no array object in memory for the reference. I can specify size of each inner array like this. Now all inner arrays will be instantiated. And when I will print array object to console, I will see something like this. What is this, and why do we see this? We'll discuss during the learning of the OOP topic when we will take a look at object class and default implementation of toString method for all objects. In GDK we have special methods to perform basic operations with arrays. Let me show you how you can easily print arrays to console. Just type system out println, next, type arrays, like this, and call to string method. Pass reference to the array object as argument to this method. Let's run this program. Here you can see values from this array. Here are they. And now, for example, I want to sort values in the array. Let's type like this. Arrays sort and pass the reference to array. And now let's print the same array to console one more time. You see? Magic happened. So what does this arrays mean? Arrays is the class in GDK which contains various methods for manipulating arrays, such as sorting and searching, for example. This class is located in Java Util package. Also I want to draw attention to one thing, that after we wrote arrays here, Eclipse automatically added import statement on the top of our Java file. What is import statement in Java? Import statement is a convenience to the programmer and is not technically needed for the programs. With import statement you bring into visibility certain classes or entire packages. As soon as you imported class in your Java file, you can refer to the class directly by using only class name. Here you can see that Eclipse helped me to import Java Util Arrays class. What if I wouldn't have this import statement? Let me just delete it. I saved the file, and you see compilation error here. Compiler can't understand to which arrays class am I referring to here, but I can tell compiler that full class name java util arrays, and error is gone. Compiler understood that I am referring to class from GDK here. If we are going to refer to dozen classes in our application, the import statement will save a lot of time and typing also. And also one more tip for the future. 
In case you see some errors in your source code, just hover mouse over error or set cursor in the place of error and press Ctrl plus 1 and see what Eclipse will suggest you to fix the error. In this case Eclipse suggested me to add import statement. Just select what you need and press enter. Do you see this? Import statement for race type appeared again on the top of our file. I save file to remove compilation error. All basic classes such as wrappers of primitive types are included in package java lang. Import statement for java lang package is implicitly added by compiler to all java files. So this declaration is redundant. You saw only two methods from arrays so far. Now I will teach you what all developers should know. You have to know how to learn and investigate source code. Just hold Ctrl button, hover over class name and do mouse left click. If you are doing this first time in the Eclipse, most likely you will see something like this. This means you don't have source code attached. Let's attach source code together. Press attach source button, external location, external file. And now, please, go to your GDK folder and find lib folder in it. You see I am in my GDK folder and in lib folder which is inside GDK. We are looking for src zip file. And this is what we are looking for. Just select it and press open. Ok? And here is your source code of arrays class. In GDK in all classes you can find detailed Java documentation about each class, field and method. That is the way how you can investigate what some specific methods do. Investigating all the source code in GDK is part of your self-education. You can find list of all fields, methods, nested and inner classes here in outline view. Also you can press Ctrl plus O to see the list here in code editor. You can start typing method name and select it to navigate faster there. For example sort of int array and press enter. And here is Java documentation for this method. Feel free to learn documentation for other methods in the class. Let's recap together what you have learned today. We learned what arrays are and how to work with arrays. We learned default values for primitive types. In this lesson you saw how to instantiate multidimensional array. Now you know what import statement is used for and how to investigate source code of GDK. Also you know what Java Util Arrays class is and how you can use it to apply basic manipulations with arrays. And now let's review your homework. You can read about arrays in books to review the same topic from different point of view. I also recommend to take your time to investigate source code of arrays class.